to the Retirement Blueprint Show. My name is Cynthia DeFazio, and I'm joined today by my co-host, Tim Lofton. Tim, how are you today? Great, Cynthia. How are you? I am fantastic. It's such a pleasure to see you. And I have to mention, this is our 50th episode today. It is our 50th episode, which is unbelievable that we've had that many episodes already. <laughs> I know, and they've been amazing because we started three years ago working together, and now here we are celebrating the 50th. And I know that you've been extremely busy, so thank you for always taking the time to do the shows. Well, thanks. It's been my pleasure. Aww. So, Cynthia, we talk about me and what we do a lot on the show, but one of the things that we haven't done and spent a lot of time on is you. And so I think that it's very cool that you actually represented Ohio in the Mrs. America pageant. I did. Oh, my gosh, Tim. I'm kind of going back down memory lane right now, if you will. But, yes, back in 1996, I was crowned Mrs. Ohio. Mm -hmm. And later that year went on to win the Mrs. America pageant, actually, in Las Vegas, Nevada. So Ohio is always going to be my true love state, obviously, born and raised Ohioan. And it was an amazing experience. I had such a good time. In fact, we just came back from the Mrs. America pageant in Las Vegas. And it was the first time, Tim, that I had been back in 26 years. Wow. And it was so nice to see everyone and just reconnect. And I'm still really good friends with the ladies that I met during that time, 1996. That is so cool. And I, I just thought people of Dayton would like to, to actually know that because, I mean, they see you on, on the show, but I don't think they knew that background. And Aww. I think that's uh, that you are a Buckeye at heart. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And Ohio was just so supportive of my entire year, not only, of course, as Mrs. Ohio, but then after I won Mrs. America, they had been wonderful, so supportive. So thank you so much for bringing that You're welcome. up today. That would, that, I just thought that would be fun to, to uh, talk about. Yes, definitely. And let's tie that into actually what we're going to talk about today for the show, because mm -hmm. we're going to talk a little bit about roller coasters, if you will. And of course, Cedar Point is known for such amazing roller coasters. Cedar Point and Kings Island. I mean, we have right? two of the big ones right here in our area. Oh, we're so blessed and fortunate. If you love roller coasters. If you love roller coasters. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit today about market volatility, if you will, because obviously everyone loves when everything is going up, right? And it's so amazing. And you've got that rush of doing well. But then let's talk about what happens when things start going down, like when the roller coaster takes that downturn. Mm -hmm. Because obviously people are working so hard to get to the retirement years. And the one thing that scares them so much, Tim, would be market volatility. So I have to ask you right out of the gate, is it different to plan for pre-retirement versus post? Well, it absolutely is, Cynthia. And, and if you look at the time that we're in today, right now, and the level of volatility, some of which we haven't seen since 1931, mm. it is and I don't like to use the word unprecedented. I, you know, I, I think those kind of ultimatums, you know, are a little uh, cliche. But I mean, we haven't seen a time like this in a very long time. Yeah. And you know, 2008 really was uh, the last time that people really experienced this type of turmoil. And if you think about it, is is it, it's hard to believe how many years ago that was. Yeah, and so we've had some amazing times uh, up until you know, this year really in the markets. And I think people have gotten a sense of, you know, when I get my statement, it's gonna go up and it feels good and everything's great. And if it doesn't go up, maybe it goes sideways. You know, we went through the period with COVID. Mm -hmm. um, but when you look at where we are today, where you have markets down 20, 30%, the bond market's down 20%, it's like, where do I hide? What do I do? Right. And when you're looking at pre-retirement, as you brought up in your question, mm -hmm. it's not a big deal right now. I mean, obviously people don't like it, but it's really more of an opportunity for them, right? Because they're still saving in their 401ks, their 403bs, their pension plans. And so they're taking advantage right now of things being down and that opportunity to go in. If you're in retirement, it's a different story. Yeah. And so retirement is a distribution phase of what we typically look at in the world of, of saving, right? Pre-retirement, we're accumulating. We're putting money away on a monthly basis. It grows and we get to an end point where we're gonna be able to take that money out and use it to subsidize our pensions and social securities. Sure. But when we're looking at distribution, that's a different deal. Mm -hmm. And it really takes a, a different mentality. And I think a lot of times, when you go through the years that we've had mm -hmm. where things are so good, your 
perception of what you would be comfortable with on the risk side changes. Sure. Uh, and you're and you're like, well, yeah, I'm okay with this. Well, volatility goes both ways, as you were describing. Yeah. Right. I mean, Absolutely. it's not just up or just down, it's both of them. Right. And so the volatility when things go up, everybody loves that. Yes. But when the roller coaster goes the other way, it's a different it's a different story. Sure. How, do you like roller coasters? Well, I'm on the fence. I mean, sometimes yes, sometimes no. When my daughter was younger, I would ride them with her. She even had us in the front seat, if you will. I mean, going mm -hmm. down at like record speed. I'm not like, I wouldn't stand in line for a roller coaster if it was just me by myself. <laughs> what about you? Well, you know what? What's funny for me is that I loved roller coasters and I would get on a roller coaster and I would ride it and it would be great and you go down the hill and your stomach drops and all that great stuff. Yeah. Um, and probably, I don't know, 20 years ago, I remember getting on the roller coaster and thinking, what if this thing comes off the rails? Ooh. Like I'd never thought about that before. That's true. And I started, you know, I, I've been studying generational psychology for a long time, and apparently I reached the generation that you think about things like that. Like when you're when you're 15, you don't really have anything to lose, right? You don't think about stuff like that. that There's is no true. 401k to spend. There's no, you know, you just don't have that type of That's risk true. coming into your your peripheral, right? Absolutely. But. As I've gotten older, it's something that, that I think more and more about. Here's to bring this into today's topic, which is risky business, right? I mean, talking about risk in the markets and all that is that you go up on a roller coaster, you go down, you lose your stomach. Sometimes it feels really bad, but what always happens is it comes to an end. Absolutely. The ride comes to an end. And it'll come to an end. The question is when, and we don't know. Yeah. Uh, there's so much going on right now with with our economy, with inflation, with uh, you know economic turmoil. We've got China shutting down because of COVID. Right. We have the the Fed raising interest rates. The dollar has now risen to a point where a lot of other economies around the world are being impacted. Yeah. And so it's creating an environment that could even get worse than where we are today. Sure. And so the question is, where do I hide? What, what do I do? Yes. And what we want to avoid is just not getting anything done, not making any decisions, just kind of living with that, that volatility and kind of burying our head in the sand. And Tim, I definitely want to dive into that so much more with you when we come back from the commercial break. But I know that you have a very special offer to present to our viewers at home. Let's talk about what that is before we open the phone lines for the first time today. Sure. So if you are like everyone else out there right now and you are worried and you're concerned, that's okay. We get it. Everyone is concerned right now. The question is, what are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. You know, are you going to have paralysis by analysis? Are you going to just stick to your guns and do what you're doing? Or are you going to investigate and see what other options you have? We would love the opportunity to sit down and talk with you. And if you pick up the phone and call us, it's 855-684-3485. We're offering a complimentary consultation. We'll take a look at what you have and we'll give you our two cents. And we would love that opportunity. Tim, thank you so much. To our viewers at home, the number to call is on your screen, and that number is 855-684-3485. We know you have a lot of questions for Tim about how to plan your perfect retirement. He has the answers for you. When we come back for this, from this very short commercial break, we're going to talk about the three-bucket approach and how this goes into your retirement planning. So please stay tuned. Again, the number is 855-684-3485. We'll be right back momentarily. Unexpected events, like a global pandemic, can turn our world upside down overnight. They can cause volatile shifts that may cause you to question the confidence in your current retirement plan. As a retiree or a pre-retiree, knowing you have a plan that can withstand the worst economic conditions is vital. Contact us today for a complimentary review. Get a second opinion and learn more about our trademark process the Retirement Blueprint. Let us plan your tomorrow today. And welcome back to the Retirement Blueprint. My name is Cynthia DeFazio, and I'm joined today by Tim Lofton. He is my co-host. Tim, on our 50th episode, can you believe it? I can't. 
It's amazing. 50 episodes. I know. It's incredible. Well, we were talking during the commercial break how you see a lot of people that are coming into the office and they are using the same strategies that they used pre-retirement going into their retirement years. Mm -hmm. How can this be a problem for them if they don't make a change? And also, let's talk a little bit about your three-bucket approach. Well, you know, Cynthia, the, it's very common that, you know, people have... Uh, taken a accumulation strategy. In other words, they have, you know, sat down with, with someone who specializes in, in retirement planning on the investment side, and that money has grown and grown and grown, and now they've gotten to retirement. The mistake that I see a lot of times with folks coming in our office is they're using that same approach, even though now they're in that distribution phase, like we were talking about earlier in the episode. Mm. And so the difference is this, if I'm looking at having all of my money in one bucket, right. and I'm doing everything in that bucket, I'm, I'm trying to get some growth, I'm trying to take income, I'm trying to balance the risk, and I'm, I've just got this one bucket, it makes it almost impossible to actually accomplish your goals. And so, our approach is with that, that three bucket approach is giving jobs to your money. It's mm. basically taking the money that you've set aside and saying, what does it need to do for you? Yeah. For example, if you need income, we look at how much income do you need? And then we can back into the number that is going to generate that income. That bucket, that job can't have risk attached to it. Mm. You can't have volatility. And a perfect example, if we look back at 2008, um, you know, the market goes down 45 percent mm -hmm. fourth quarter of 2008. But if you're taking income from that, even if you were conservatively invested, you could have still been down half that amount. So, I mean, 20, 25 percent. So while you had set up the idea of I can take a 4 percent withdrawal rate or a 3 percent withdrawal rate for my money and I'm going to be fine, now you have 25% less money. Right. So now I'm no longer taking out 3%. I may be taking out four, five, six. We saw people as high as eight, nine percent wow. on their withdrawal rates. And so the the idea here is, is that if that money that has to generate income, if that's its job, it has to be safe. We have to take volatility out of the picture. And Absolutely. I think a lot of the fear that we see right now today with people that are that are looking at their statements and they're so concerned, that's what they're concerned about. They're like, you know, I've got to take income from this and it just seems like it's going down. Yeah. And so if you can separate that risk and separate that volatility for the income piece, then you end up with money for the other two buckets. And the mm -hmm. second bucket we look at is our growth bucket. It's our extra. It's money that we no longer need for retirement income. Mm -hmm. It's for the future, things like covering inflation or rising taxes or, or potentially you know, making a, a car purchase or something down the road. The reason that volatility isn't an issue with that bucket is I don't have to take income out of it. Okay. So if things go up and down, I can weather the storm and I'm yeah. just fine because my income bucket over here is giving me what I need. Okay. Okay. The third bucket is the long-term care bucket. That's that what if. You know, if I were to go into a nursing home, what's going to happen? How would I pay for that? And so it has a completely different job than the other two. And so when you start assigning jobs to the money, it makes all the difference in the world for your plan. Well, Tim, obviously I'm thinking as I'm listening to you speak that obviously that one bucket, it's scary because they always say don't put your eggs all in one basket. Right. And it's very risky to have everything in one bucket, which is the theme of our show today, obviously. Risky, risky business. business. <laughs> Absolutely. When you mention people taking more out of their savings, if you will, their buckets, mm -hmm. I look at this like, well, of course they are because inflation is going up and the cost of goods are so much more. So how does that impact retirees overall when you're seeing them taking out larger amounts of money when they don't have that plan in place of the three bucket approach. And again, inflation like the market volatility has become such a subject today because when we're looking at how things have gone the last few years, we really haven't had a lot of inflation. We really haven't. Right. And so we've been down this path of people kind of again being lulled into a sense of comfort where they're not seeing 
things go up in, in price. And now all of a sudden, 2022 hits, we've got an inflation rate of 9%, gas has doubled, groceries have doubled, cost to build a house has doubled. All these things have increased at such a high rate yeah. that it was such a shock, I think, to people's system. And so one of the things with, with having that growth bucket, why it's important is we know cost of living is gonna double every 20 years. Mm. So if my retirement plan includes me needing to produce, we'll, we'll say $50,000 from my nest egg to subsidize my social security or my pension, we know 20 years from now, that same 50,000 is now gonna need to be $100,000. Wow. Which is a pretty big lift. And so when you look at things like, you know, for example, CDs or fixed rates, the danger with those is my principal doesn't increase, right. right? It provides safety of income, which is great, but I have to have something else over here that's also going to grow so that when I look down the road, I'm gonna have rising income. That's, that's kind of that, that key takeaway when you're, when you're, looking, when you're looking at sure. that. And rates have gone up. Yeah. significantly. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if we have a, have a slide, but I can kind of show you where we are. You know, fixed rates yeah. right now, we see, you know, up to 5% plus Absolutely. On, on fixed rates, which is, you know, unheard of and where we have been over the last, you know, 10 years. Absolutely. Where those rates were, you know, one, two, three percent. And so looking at, you know, where do I go? What are, what are some of the, the areas where I can get some guaranteed rates where I don't have that volatility? Fixed rates right now are, are certainly an opportunity. And you know, certainly if, if people are interested in investigating that type of fixed rate, they could just give us a call. Absolutely. Well, Tim, I know I want to talk to you more in depth about the bond market when we come back, but I know you have a very special offer to present to our viewers at home. Why don't we talk about what that is before we reopen the phone line? Sure. So one of the things that uh, everyone that comes in our office struggles with is questions. Not the questions that they have, but the ones that they don't have. You don't know what you don't know. And so we built a plan called the Retirement Blueprint to help people walk through the things that they need to get them to and through retirement. And if you give us a call, we are happy to provide you with a complimentary visit with us where we can discuss in detail what that plan might look like for you. Tim, thank you so much. To our viewers at home, remember you have worked your entire life to get to the retirement years and you deserve to have the retirement of your dreams. What Tim is offering you today is a chance to come in to sit with him, let him get to know you and what your goals and dreams are for retirement. That number to call is 855-684-3485. We're going to take a very short commercial break here on the Retirement Blueprint Show. But when we come back, I want to talk to Tim a little bit about the state of the bond market right now. And are there any safe alternatives? You're not going to want to miss his response, stay tuned. We're passionate about making sure our clients live stress-free in retirement. We do that with the Retirement Blueprint. It's our trademark planning process designed to help you navigate to and through retirement. When you're nearing retirement, it's essential that you have a written plan and know exactly how that plan will work for you. Let us show you how 27 years of experience can make a difference in your plan. And welcome back to the Retirement Blueprint Show. My name is Cynthia DeFazio, and I'm joined today by my co-host, Tim Lofton. Tim, a great show we're having today, talking about such important topics and how they impact retirees overall. Obviously, we know the stock market where that is currently right now, and also the bond market. Let's talk a little bit about that. I believe it's down 20% at the time of this show today. Mm -hmm. Wanted to ask you, are there any safe alternatives to the bond market? What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's a great question, Cynthia. And I think, you know, again, the, the theme of this show has been that people have been, are getting kind of lulled into a sense of comfort, right? They, yeah. We had very low inflation for, for a number of years. We had really good markets for a number of years. Uh, bonds have th thought, anyway, been kind of the safety net, the airbag of our car, if you, if you will. Mm. And, you know, when you see the level of decline 
uh, mm -hmm. almost on par with the stock market. That's that's where people are holding up their hands saying, wait, I didn't sign up for that. Right. I mean, I, 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 I invested in this area because I was looking for safety and they got the exact opposite of that, which is scary and frustrating all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as we talk about alternatives to bonds or even to, to, to CDs, although the CD rates have gotten a lot better today, um, you know, we look at things like fixed annuities. Um, okay. And I think we have a slide we can kind of give our viewers at home an idea of, of what those rates are right now, mm. where you can put your money away, similar to a, a CD, but for two years or three years, you can lock in a fairly decent fixed interest rate. Mm, okay. The other alternative, um, and again, these are things that a lot of times people don't like to talk about, mm. are index annuities, where okay. somebody says, you know, well, Tim, you know, that, that four or 5% is great, but I'm really looking for maybe a larger return, a higher opportunity to, to gain. And for some of my growth money, that might be an area, but I'm still worried about where things are in the market wise. And I, I don't know if, what to do. That index annuity is another great option for them to look for something that can maybe get a five to 7% return without the downside risk. And mm. so both of those, both of those ideas uh, year to date, if you were in an index annuity, even though the market's down, your worst case scenario is a 0% return. Mm. Uh, if you look at the fixed rates, they have no connection to the market, so they wouldn't be down at all. And so not that you would put all of your money in any of those ideas, but it starts to open up the discussion of what is the job of the money? Absolutely. Where, yeah. where should the money be, and do I have volatility associated with dollars that shouldn't have volatility associated with them. Sure. Well, Tim, I know we've talked in the past, obviously, when people are coming into the office for the very first time, you mm -hmm. ask them, what is your risk tolerance? And mm -hmm. most often they'll say, well, you know, I'm kind of moderate. But when you really x-ray their portfolio, I mm -hmm. know that you've discovered they're taking a lot more risk than what they originally had thought. So let's, I want to ask you that. How important mm -hmm. is it to have a second opinion from a fresh set of eyes when they're coming in for the first time? Well, and, and we've certainly seen this in the last couple of months where people are coming into our office now daily mm -hmm. uh, wanting a second opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, they're like, you know, I, I'm talking to my person and my person just says, hang tight, it's all going to be okay, but I don't feel like it's going to be all okay. And, uh, you know, I'm watching the news and it just, it seems like more bad news after more bad news. Yeah. And I'm concerned about the direction and, and how much I've already lost and you know what? What should I do? And so, right. one of the tools that we have available to us is that Riskalyze software. Okay. It won the Nobel Prize for Economics, and it takes a look at what somebody owns. And our wealth management team will actually put in all the holdings that somebody currently owns, and we can actually see exactly what the level of risk is. And I think your question or your statement that you made about you know people answering that question. It's yeah. such an arbitrary question of, you know, well, you know, where do you fit in in the risk spectrum? Pick yeah. a number between one and 10, or, you know, would you classify yourself as this or that? Is their perspective. Yeah. Like it's not a, it's not a, a an actual measurable metric. Right. Right. It's just how I feel. Exactly. And I don't even know if, if the words that I'm saying actually reflect how I feel. Yeah. And so this gives people the ability to see, okay, let's put it in dollars and cents. Let's put it in terms that people understand. Mm -hmm. In 2008, if you had a million dollars and it turned into $750,000, could you live through that? Would you be okay with that? Mm -hmm. And what is the upside that I'm trying to trade for that downside risk because often we find that people have more downside risk than they actually do upside. Hmm. That's very common. I would say eight out of 10 people that come in when we actually do the risk allies report find that their downside risk is higher than what their upside risk is. Wow. That's important to know. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, Tim, all of the guidance that you're giving today, we're talking to people that are entering their retirement years, but what about people that are in their second and third generation of retirement? Mm -hmm. Are these the same rules that they should be following as well? 
Um, for the most part, yes. Uh, you know, one of the things that you see that's different than your 50s and 60s, the 70s and 80s, uh, a lot of times there's things that need to be adjusted on the estate plan. Mm -hmm. uh, we see uh, opportunities for, you know, nursing homes are looming a little bit closer when I'm in my 80s than when I'm in my 50s, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, you can actually see that as, as a possibility. Um, so I think that that is, that is part of it. Um, one of the, the things that a lot of times retirees are discovering in, in their 80s is what a big bite inflation has taken out of their spending power. Sure. And that has been, you know, one of the things that we try to get people in their 50s and 60s to focus on so that they don't wake up one day and have the same amount of income, but they can buy a lot less with it. Right, because you've always been passionate about saying people should thrive in their retirement mm -hmm. years. You don't want to see anyone just get by, but really what they need, Tim, is a proper plan to help them through these very mm -hmm. challenging times, if you will. Well, the plan is essential. Yeah. Um, you know, the whole idea behind retirement is almost a military operation, yeah. right? I mean, it takes a lot of planning, things like tax planning, income planning, uh, financial advice as far as, as risk management, looking at nursing homes, maximizing social security and pension decisions. There's all these different things that go into it. Yeah. And if you don't have a plan, you're planning to fail. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Tim, I know we only have a little over a minute left of the show this week. I know there's a very special offer that you'd like to present. Let's talk about what that is before we say goodbye to our viewers. Dayton, this is your opportunity. These are very uncertain times, and we get that, and, and we empathize with that. We mm -hmm. empathize with how you feel when you go to the mailbox and you open up your statement and it's gone down 20, 30%. Mm -hmm. We get it. The question is, what are you going to do about it? And can we offer help? Because that's what we want to do. We want to offer you a solution. Give us a call. Come in and sit down with us. Let us see if we can help you thrive in retirement. Tim, thank you so very much. To our viewers at home, we'd like to thank you for spending time with us today on the Retirement Blueprint Show. Remember, this is our 50th episode. Tim has a very special offer for you. He would like to offer you the opportunity to come in, to sit with him, and let him get to know you, what your goals, your dreams, and your plans are for retirement. He can help design a plan that's going to benefit your needs. Again, the number is 855-684-3485. Thank you for watching the Retirement Blueprint Show. We'll see you next week. Be safe, be happy, and be be blessed.